some of the bigger notable people when you were super young? And then who were some of the mentors that you had that people may know or not know? Uh, I mean, when I was growing up, it was, you know, Vinny Asara, the skipper yeah. with the Bonanno family. Uh, Rona, my personal friend and somebody I had looked up to my whole life was uh, Ronnie one on Trucchio. Yes. He was the biggest name in my area at the time. Skipper with the Gambinos was doing life now. Yeah. Uh, Jojo Carrazzo, of course, that yeah. was his. He was, you know, the big shot in that neighborhood at the time. Fat Andy Ruggiano, where I moved as I got older, closer to 88 Park, where all of them guys were from. Uh, John Senior, of course, when I was a kid, he was, you know, yeah. in the streets. I mean, that area was just uh, Joey Scopo, who, you know, God rest his soul, had happened to get clipped back in the 90s. He had a social club on 101st Avenue uh, with the Columbos. So it was a, it was just, like I said, a serious mobbed up area, you know. And I would say Ronnie one on True Kill was who I looked up to and wind up, you know, being close friends with most of my life. And, uh yeah, he was he was a mentor in that life for me as I was growing up in it. Absolutely. And and so you started out young. So give us like your first kind of the first stuff you did, what kind of money you made, and uh, how old were you? Well, I learned about football sheets. Uh, I don't know if you know what football sheets are. You know, where I, you I, are. I have a decent understanding, but if you want to go a little bit into it, yeah, football sheets are these papers that have two forms on it. You pick your Saturday teams, you pick your Sunday teams. Uh, was up to the minimum of a dollar, up to whatever you know your runner puts a cap on it. You yeah. go twelve out of twelve, three for three. It's yeah. like four yeah. to one, yeah. you know stuff like that. And you get a slip, and then the other slip goes to the runner, gets put away. And I would actually run those slips at five years old from like, you know, run this over to the cafe, run this over to, you know, the Banano Social Club, go by Vinny Social Club, you know, drop this off at the pizzeria. Things like that, because it was just neighborhood guys, knock yep. around guys, not necessarily mobbed up guys, just guys that were around, and that's what I—that's how I started out. You know, I strayed away from that for a while. I got into drugs, big, you know, not using, selling, learning the ins and outs of, you know, mescaline, marijuana, then moved on to cocaine, and then eventually crack cocaine. Okay, how old were you at that point? So I want to kind of build. build about, when I got involved with the heavier stuff, about twelve to thirteen mescaline and weed i was about 10 or 11 yeah i mean i was on the streets my whole life just there was nothing else i didn't see being a doctor or a lawyer or a, an electrician or a plumber in my future you know that's i see myself as a street guy and eventually hopefully one day yeah so being a teenager yikes being a teenager yeah. and buying like weight to sell i guess i'm assuming you were right distributing not retail right i get i'm guessing um who did you get it well, that you that was more towards like six like when i was 12 or 13 i would just go into east new york because i had a good relationship with the drug dealers there they yeah. usually wouldn't sell to a you know a white guy with light eyes and light hair and my complexion but i went up getting in good with like these jamaican guys and i would buy like uh nickel bags of weed but they were like huge bags so they looked like 20 sacks yeah. So I would bring those back into Queens and sell them for $20. Or I would bring them to my school where kids kind of knew, so I'd sell them for 10 okay, so we're doing And then I had a guy who had mescaline and acid. we pay a dollar a piece, and I'd sell them for $5. So wow. that was kind of like my intro into that. And then